After more than 13 years, the U.S. officially marking the end of combat operations in Afghanistan with a ceremony in Kabul. And this morning, questions over whether our next major conflict could look totally different. At the start of this year, we, uh, there'll be nearly 30,000 30, more private contractors in Afghanistan and Iraq than the U.S. military. So what does this trend mean? Let's ask uh, Sean McFate, a uh, former paratrooper with the U.S. Uh, Army's 82nd Airborne Division and international security expert. He's also the author of The Modern Mercenary, Private Armies and What They Will Mean for Our World Order. Uh, good morning. Good to, good to see you. And uh, Let me ask you a question. What, what do you think the drawbacks will be to going to a, a so-called mercenary or contracted army versus increasing our military forces, uh, getting better and, and more uh, well-trained army personnel in those conflicts? Well, there will be many drawbacks. First of all, the U.S. military itself generally does not like working with contractors. They're considered lower-grade soldiers, even though many contractors are ex-soldiers. And probably a lot of Americans don't like the idea of outsourcing warfare. This is not how uh, states should fight wars. Um, um, so that's some of the disadvantages. Well, you have some certainly financial benefits potentially uh, for having private contracts is when the, when the conflict or battle is over, basically the contract's uh, done versus uh, keeping our military uh, in uh, peacetime. It obviously costs a tremendous amount of money. However, my question, I guess, to you and many others who are considering this is, what do you deal, how do you deal with the uh, UCMJ issues? How do you deal with the uh, status of forces agreements? Are they part of it? So, for example, what if somebody does something, as we've had in the past, in another country, what are their rights and privileges and protections, and what are the drawbacks? Well, it's amazing after over a decade of war, we still don't really have good regulation or any regulation of this industry, an industry that can outsource violence. Um, you know, typically if a contractor does something overseas like kills a civilian in Iraq, they, you know, as they say, they get aisle or window on the way home. That's kind of the, the limit of accountability. Well, and that's, even that's, actually, we, that's actually not quite true. If they're, they're attached to the military, they fall under the UCMJ. But do you think that in the future we're going to be fighting our, our wars with private contractors versus uh, using our military and the trained forces that we provide? Well, we're, gonna, we're certainly seeing a trend towards that. Uh, you know, in World War II, contractors made up only 10% of military forces in overseas combat zones. In Iraq, it was 50%, a one-to-one -one ratio between contractor and soldiers. And in Afghanistan, it was even higher. So trend lines seem to indicate that increasingly we'll see more contractors on the battlefield. Well, on the one hand, you have corporations who say, uh, you know, listen, we're not going to call on the military every time we have a problem. We're going to try to protect our personal interests. They will hire contractors. But on the other side, you have private corporations hiring people to fight their battles. And at what point does, do they cross that line and say, oh, my goodness, we have to bring in uh, the U.S. military? Uh, so it's going to be an interesting uh, question for future leaders. That's exactly right. So the question is really, will other like non-states use this industry, uh, multinational corporations, but even you know, re regimes in other countries use this industry, and can that create more war, and can that suck the U.S. into wars overseas? Well, all great questions. Listen, we appreciate you being with us. Next. Thank you. Thank you.